Hey, what's up, folks? Bit of a mixed bag today. <laughs> Just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, about my somewhat about my uh, taper attachment build. Since I, uh, I I videoed a lot, I had lots of video of this, but all the important stuff kind of did not pan out for some reason on the camera. So it was kind of a it was kind of a failed project on that both in video and in actual <laughs> so yeah so i just wanted to talk to you guys about the, the importance of having a, a level lathe and everything because uh, i i didn't really take take much i didn't really take it into too much consideration but as i was uh doing it, i noticed that like i faced off all these parts for uh for the taper attachment build you know this was going to be the part of my hanger bracket you know, it was going to be something like this, I guess. That would be the back end. That would be the front end. And it almost, you know, I thought it was working out good at the time. But when I got to uh, fitting it all up, none, none of it uh, fit at all. Like, well, the holes in uh, correlation to each other worked out great. But the uh, dovetail turned out all squirrely. And, you know, after doing all that work, and I even tried to salvage it a little bit. And, you know, it was nothing doing. So... That was a big fail, unfortunately. I'll probably get around to making that in the future uh, and getting some actual decent video out of it. So believe it or not, you know, working with the tools I got and making the most of what I got has kind of become the MO of my channel. But I gotta admit, it's, uh, it's getting kind of tiresome. <laughs> when big projects and you put a lot of work into them and they screw up on you just for uh well i guess we'll call it the accumulation of small screw-ups turning into a giant screw-up that's uh that's starting to become a problem and you can only really work with what the tools you got so so all i can really do is just try to make things better <laughs> so these guys for instance these are the ones, the pieces that I faced off on the, on, I just faced them off on the lathe, obviously. But this is where, what lies in the problem. What was happening with these pieces is that they were cupping. So every time I try to stick them in the fore jaw and indicate them, the taper was coming out even after I flip it and it's still coming out. So I'm like, well, what the? It totally confounded me. I'm like, well, screw it. And I just kept on going. Or screw up number one. <laughs> But as you go on and you make other parts with that that you use to make other parts, like this one for instance, I had to uh, I had to reface this side because sticking it on a fixture plate on its on its uh, face here was causing this to well I'm not sure I get that in the camera properly but it was causing it to tilt like that. So when you clamp at something like this and then you tilt it. And cut your piece and then do this well screw up number two <laughs> and as in for a much earlier screw up like I did the best I could with what I had which is a can of problem and these holes are not even you know they're not they're not good because I can only do three at a time or something and I have to spin it and do the other three and spin it and do three more and whatnot. And it was, yeah, so lots of them are... I didn't have the measuring tools or the straight edges or anything to get that right, so... Uh, another screw up. Screw up number, what is it, four now? <laughs> so you get what I'm saying here. You know, all these all these little screw ups that I say, you know, oh, good enough. Well, it eventually boils down to, well, shit. <laughs> So, the reason being why I was getting the cupping, I guess, yeah, that's what we're getting around to. So, I uh, I did some research, and I think it was Dale's Tips and Tricks on, I think, Build Something Cool is, is his name of his channel. And he had a pretty uh, basic way to tram your lathe and level your lathe and stuff. Like, what happened, I'm sure, is the, the frost thawed out, and my floor being... <laughs> Uh, multiple pieces of concrete flooring now over the years cracking into uh you know into oblivion so then you go you get one piece and the whole lathe just sh bench shifts a little bit and twisted the ways and well there you have it so 
at least I was able to. So I ended up having to make a gizmo and a plumb bob and then leveled out the ways that way, which I then proceeded to take it one step further even, watching another Mr. Pete video where he made this uh, bar and uh, to tram in your tailstock, of course. And I am pretty happy with the outcome on this, as far as I know. Like we got, like this is pretty much spot on. It's only about six inches long, because that's just what material I had. I would like to go a little longer, but. And what I got out of this, like it's, it's pretty much bang on, to be honest. What are we looking at here? Get focus would be nice. Focus. Goddamn camera. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. What is that? Uh, 77 and a half. 977 and a half. On that side. And that's what I got last time, too. So. Get that to focus again. Nine seventy-seven and maybe six tenths. So we're within a tenth on this old bugger of a lathe. That's pretty damn good. So I was pretty happy with how that turned out. Yeah. So in lieu of all these, I don't know if you'd call them what revelations. I guess. <laughs> I've mean, I've started. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and start to get more more better tools. I guess. Like bought myself a lathe file, and I gotta say this thing is beautiful I've never I've never had a file this nice before <laughs> that's gonna get a very nice cherry handle at some point don't worry I'm not doing that today and some uh, of course I got some punches proper punches for locating holes and these are gonna be for for this weird piece Next up for the next one I make, I'm going to stick those right in there and I'm just going to punch the holes out once I get a working dovetail. Because, uh, you know, that was a lot of work to, to end up just kind of using for a paperweight. It won't even fit in the fucking bucket. So yeah, where was I? Oh yeah. Well here I'll show you guys what I was talking about with the... This is how I found out my lathe was, uh, my lathe bed was crooked. <laughs> a little bit of a weird way to find out I guess, but uh, I, can, I can assure you I'll be checking it a lot more frequently from now on. But I was setting up an indicator right along the side here. Oops. And we got it to pretty damn close it's within half a thou now but when I flipped over to this side you know we still got got it pretty much bang on so the last time when I was doing this it was coming out so every time I bring it out you know it was, it was coming out like by four thousandths of an inch and then I'd flip it and it would do the exact same thing I'm like well what the hell so there was really only two reasons that could happen is that would either be my headstock frickin' moved somehow or there was a twist in my ways. And that's where that gizmo came in with the plumb bob. That helped me straighten out my table, not so much level the lathe, but straighten everything out so that everything was running straight with the spindle. And now, now it's everything seems to be working a lot better now. So good times. Yeah, so little by little, the shop's turning into into something here at least. I picked up a set of uh, twelve piece set of MT3 collets, and hopefully, uh, <laughs> it should spare me some some grief over making uh, 
end mill holders all the time. Hopefully. Because, uh, yeah, that was another thing. Trying to make a freaking taper when your lathe is out of, out of uh, tram. Doesn't always work so good. So. Like I said, little by little, we're making this shop into something. <laughs> yeah, so. Unfortunately, I couldn't get around to making any more of that taper attachment build. It was just not where I wanted it to be. It took a lot of time and I missed a bunch of footage and it was not the build that I had originally intended for video. That seems it takes 12 hours to upload a video. <laughs> it should be a little bit better than that. So I'm gonna to, uh, yeah, well, I guess this isn't much better. <laughs> Anyways, folks, don't forget to wish your uh, moms a happy Mother's Day today. Providing that this gets out before midnight. <laughs> and uh, I will be getting on to that tape attachment build very soon. You see me fixing up another piece to go into the... To uh, get fixed up. And yeah, like, you know, I can't stress enough the importance of uh, checking your lathe once in a while. That's actually the first time I've ever done that. And uh, I can see why some of my stuff is not the... Yeah, a little bit on the hokey side. So I am going to make the most of it. I'm going to make the best effort I can to, to put out some more quality stuff. In the meantime, folks, you have a great night, great day, and uh, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Oh, what the hell am I supposed to do with all these? <laughs> oh, well, 